It began as an idea. Take a viral video and refine it into a new combat sport. Many said it could not be done, but we believed in the process. From humble beginnings we grew, writing and refining the rules, hosting amateur events in bars and nightclubs, and developing the sport of slapping. During the pandemic, we were forced to produce our events in undisclosed locations. Warehouses, abandoned buildings, and empty event centers hosted Slap Fight Championship while millions of fans watched online. As the fan base grew, Slap Fight began hosting pay-per-view events and broadcasting internationally, spreading the sport to over 100 countries worldwide, continuing to build an audience for Slap Fight Championship. Now we have arrived, and we are no longer competing in undisclosed locations. After receiving over 1 billion viral views and hosting more events than all other slap organizations combined, we have become the top slap fighting promotion on the planet. With our loyal fan base in tow, we now embark on a new era in combat sports. This is Slap Fight. Well, it's fight night once again at Slap Fight Championship. We have spent years grinding and developing the sport, and tonight marks a new era for the sport of slapping. Hello, friends. My name is JT Tilly, and I'd like to welcome all of you joining us live on Fight, plus the new fans watching from Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Switzerland on Sport One Network. We have quite an interesting card for you tonight. But first, our three fight undercard begins with power lifter Achilles of Denver facing Team Cannon middleweight Runt of Sevierville, Tennessee. All right, Denver, Colorado native Achilles is back. Achilles is one of the unintentionally most hilarious slappers in the game. We first saw Achilles in the middleweight adrenaline tournament when he went up against future champion Coach Killa. Wasn't a fantastic fight and it ended with Coach Killa absolutely starching him as a knockout. Then he went on and he faced Monkey Wrench, the cleanest slapper at Slap Fight Championship currently. And he went through a, a fight where Monkey Wrench had absolutely no penalties and Achilles had as many penalties as you could count. It was a question of whether or not Achilles could make it to the end of the matchup, but he did. He took some big, big punishment and he stayed in all the way. He's going to be facing Runt. Runt is an exciting new fighter that came on the slap fighting scene earlier this year as part of Team Cannon. He's gone through several big, big matches and he's coming off of a big win against Team Shimokin's Karma. Runt versus Achilles is the first fight in the new era. Achilles coming in from Denver at 186 pounds. Runt from Kodiak, Tennessee, 183 pounds. And I can't wait to see which one of these guys continues their winning streak at Slap Fight Championship. You see the new, uh, the new uh, uniforms for Slap Fight Championship. We want to give a big shout out to one of our sponsors at Sin City Sublimation. Sin City Sublimation made all of the new uh, jerseys for the fighters and the Sports Slap USA officials. Now, we're getting ready to go back to the platform to our announcer, Dallin Getling, and we're going to get New oh, Era underway. Really he actually wants to go against me, like, makes me giddy on the inside. So, like, all I got to say is, man, show up, get ready for f***ing fences, because we're going to be swinging for him, because I'm going to try and decapitate him. That's just the way it goes. When I got offered this fight, I was really excited to take it. I know he went 10 rounds with Monkey Wrench. I'm willing to see if he'll go 10 with me. All right, let's bring out our first fighter. He hails out of Denver, Colorado, weighed in at 187 pounds. Please give it up for Akili. a look at Achilles. This is a tough, tough guy, and we have watched this guy take big, big punishment recently in his fight with Monkey Wrench. There is no doubt that he has a chin. This man is a competitive power lifter. 
He's a jiu-jitsu practitioner. He competes at Car Jitsu Championship, and he loves to slap fight. He is an absolute competitor and soon to be a first-time father. Achilles comes to us all the way from Denver, Colorado, why, by way of Branson, Missouri. This is his third appearance at Slap Fight Championship. And now introducing his opponent. He hails out of Kodak, Tennessee, fighting out of Team Cannon, weighed in at 183 pounds. Please welcome Ryan. the standouts of Team Cannon, it's Runt. Runt weighed in at 183 pounds. He stands at five foot six. He's a stocky little dude with about a three inch deficit against Achilles. Fun fact, in Achilles last fight, he fought Monkey Wrench, which is a teammate of Runt. So Runt has plenty of inside information about Achilles. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is JT Tilly, and I am absolutely elated to be here with you for the start of a new era of American slap fighting. Now, without any further do-do, we're gonna go right down to the barrel and our lead official, Kyron Bowen. Given the uh, competitors a quick rules meeting, and then we're gonna move on into the coin toss. Now there was a substantial training camp with the slappers backstage with Frank the Tank, legendary people's champion of slap fighting. So I would imagine that these two slappers are probably ready to go and tired of hearing about the rules. Let's get this coin toss in and get the match underway. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a new era in American slap fighting. We have now been regulated and we are an official American sport. All right, Runt wins the coin toss. There's no doubt he's going to choose to slap first. And let's get this show underway. And a big shot to start the match. One of the things we love about Achilles is that he visibly shows the signs of duress after the slap. The fans love it, uh, the opponents love it. Achilles, on the other hand, seems to have an issue with it, and it's happening right now. I have no doubt he'll come back to the barrel. In a show of sportsmanship, we've got a fist bump here. And Runt's going to step into the zone here and take the first slap from Achilles. This fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. It is regulated by Sports Slap USA. Our officials this evening surround the platform. We've got line Davidson, Q, or excuse me, line judge Q Davidson. We've got lead official Kyron Bowen, and of course we've got sanctioning representative and judge Sammy Banks. Our medical team, as always, Nurse Tammy with EMT and fight doc Roger Bennett. Now the 60-second clock has stopped. It's time for Achilles to uh, return fire. Lead official Kyron Bowen loves the fans. Those are his people in the pit. The pit is sponsored by House of Gains, the best supplement for big, big gains, House of Gains supplements. One, two, three, okay, very clean shot, no foot movement whatsoever. A Little bit of placement issue there, but I think they're gonna let it slide. Okay, we're stepping it to the top of round two. I'd give round one to Runt just based on the reaction from Achilles. One, Here's your wind up. Two, round two. Three, oh, another good yeah. shot. Yeah. Let's see if Achilles puts on a show for us. Lead official Kyron Bowen, the most accomplished slap official in the world. He's a professional mixed martial artist, a four stripe brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and an all around great guy and he has officiated over 120 slap matches in the last five years. Our line official Q Davidson has been there for every one of them as well. That makes this the best team of slap fight officials in the world. Achilles is taking every bit of his break 
and he's going to step back to the barrel now for the windup. Right. Strong, strong guy, Achilles. Not a lot of power there. I've seen Achilles throw some very big strikes, but I think he's opting for a clean match this time. It's very clear that he's holding back in favor of technique. Runt put on a show in his last fight against uh, Karma. Karma from Shamokin, Pennsylvania. Runt from Kodiak, Tennessee. It was an incredible fight. It ended uh, by decision with Runt as the victor. He's looking for two wins in a row tonight. Oh, he turned that head. I almost heard the teeth chatter of Achilles. Turned his neck pretty good. Achilles is going to take a, he's going to pop a squat here and just deal with the pain. Maybe he's going to sit down on his butt. If he does, that's a big, big mistake. That will be a knockdown. Achilles really feels the slaps. I don't know that that slap would have ended most matches, but Achilles taking a few moments here just to clear the cobwebs. He's having a conversation with lead official Kyron Bowen. He's rubbing his eye. I didn't see the slap land in the eye, but sometimes it doesn't have to for you to feel it in the eyeball. He seems to be okay. He's joking with the official. He only has 60 seconds before he can return to the barrel. Hopefully he knows not to sit down on his butt or he will be called on for having a knockdown. Excuse me. Is it possible that Achilles will tap out of this fight in round three? Achilles is one of the strongest middleweights in the league. He's incredibly strong. And we have learned that muscle doesn't necessarily translate into slapping power. But in some cases, that blunt force trauma is big. It does end fights. It did not end this one. We're going to go back into the match at round three. Achilles checking his placement. Here's your windup. Another clean shot from Achilles. Achilles likely realizes that if he lands 10 clean shots, he can win the match. However, he's got to be careful with showing. Oh, no. Okay, they're looking at the footage here. It looks like uh, Q Davidson has called a stepping violation on Achilles. That's probably just going to be a warning, but if he steps again, he will lose a turn. Achilles is quite a character. He's been around uh, Slap Fight Championship for a couple of years now. We all like him very much, but uh, watching him get slapped is quite enjoyable. One, two, three. Oh! Wow! Probably the best slap I've seen Runt land in a long time. Achilles eats it. I have no doubt he's going to take every second of his break. your wind up Two, round four. Three, oh not a bad slap from the broadcast booth it's hard to see Achilles feet but it does look like they're talking to him again violation on Achilles, oh. loss of turn. these officials are not playing tonight they have called a stepping violation this is the second violation for Achilles that means he's going to lose a turn looking at his towel I see a little bit of we blood there a flinching warning on rut Okay, you heard uh, our host, Dallin Getling, with a flinching warning called on Runt, a stepping violation on Achilles. 
typically when there's an offensive violation, we don't call a, uh, a defensive foul, but in some cases the, the officials do choose to do so, and that was tonight. One, Round five. Two, oh my gosh. All right, Runt is on one tonight. Fantastic performance so far by Runt. He represents Team Cannon out of Sevierville, Tennessee in his corner tonight, the Cannon. The Cannon who should be, should be slapping in about two matches against newcomer Outlaw. As a coach, the Cannon has stepped on the scene in the last year and he has really become a, a, a favorite character to the fans. Uh, some people call him Slap Jesus, Other thinks, others think he looks like Moist Critical, uh, but that's just uh, the Cannon to us and we love him. The Cannon's got two big, big fights tonight, including uh, uh, Monkey Wrench and Runt that he will be cornering, but he himself will be fighting as well. Now Achilles is wiping a little bit of blood out of his nose. It doesn't look like he's thinking of withdrawing, but it does look like he's feeling these slaps. He's always got something clever to say, Achilles. He's a funny guy. He's a great personality, but he slaps hard, and he, uh, he seems to be ready to take this all the way to the 10th round. Let's see if it goes that far. Oh, man. Nice loud pop to that slap, but it did look like the placement was a little bit off. They're having a conversation again. We have a clubbing warning. Clubbing warning for Runt. I would agree with that call. I know that was not intentional, but he slapped him in the eye, and Achilles seems to be feeling that. Achilles recently traveled to one of our sister shows at Car Jitsu Championship to compete. Fantastic match. It should be going up soon if you'll check our, uh, our sister site, Car Jitsu Championship on YouTube. Some crazy extreme sports coming from our company and more to come in the future. Look us up on all social media and on YouTube, Car Jitsu Championship. But tonight, we're slapping. And you can see at this point that Runt is in the zone. He's ready for this next round. It's round six. Achilles has visibly been worn by every single slap. I don't know if this is a, one of his strategies or not, but definitely the judges are seeing that these slaps are making a difference. Runt with beautiful silky hair. I don't know how I feel about the man bun, but uh, that's the thing about Team Cannon. They are without a doubt the hairiest team in the nation. All right, we're back in the mix here. Round six. Here's your placement. And your wind up. All right, it looks like we may have another clubbing violation here. Some of the fights tonight have been a little bit reckless and the officials are definitely honing in on these violations. If I were in the back warming up for a fight tonight, I would definitely be working my technique. Oh, a fantastic slap, good placement. Runt has definitely been working on his game at Team Cannon in Sevierville, Tennessee. Behind the platform, you can see a group of 30 or 40 fans coming to us from slapfight.live. Anytime you want to learn about slap fighting, go to slapfight.live. You can learn all about our company, upcoming shows, and of course, from time to time, invitations to undisclosed location events. Round seven, Runt's already back to the barrel. Achilles is considering some of his life choices. All right, and he's back in it. Here we go, round seven. Good slap. You can bet on many of tonight's fights at DraftKings.com, DraftKings in specific betting territories. If you go to DraftKings now, you can take a look at the odds of several of tonight's fights and you can place bets 
If you go to DraftKings and you do not see Slap Fight Championship, that just means that we are not certified in your area yet. But we will be soon, so keep checking back. Those of you that would like to place a bet. Oh, no. Big, big club, not a good shot at all. We're going to see what the officials decide. But again, those of you that would like to bet tonight on Slap Fight Championship. We have a clubbing violation by Rock. Okay, Achilles may be playing this up just to get the win. Let's take a look here. We'll let the medical team take a look at him. I would like to remind you that there are two bets that you can make on tonight's action. The first bet is the over-under bet, and that's where you decide whether you believe that the fight will last to the end of the fight or if it will end early. Go ahead and take a look at DraftKings.com and see what your opinion is. The second bet would be the money line, and that would be which one of these guys will win the fight. Go there now. We've got several fights coming up on this card, and you will be able to place your bets for the first time in slap fighting history here in the United States with DraftKings. Now we're getting a look at Achilles here. He's just uh, sitting on the mat. This is definitely going to be ruled a knockdown, whether he fell or whether he sat down. That will count on the judges' scorecards for Runt, but so will dancing around the mat and the platform grabbing your face after the slap. Achilles is a little loose on his feet here. The medical team's going to have a conversation with him, make sure he's okay to continue. If not, we may have a TKO victory for Runt. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a doctor stoppage. Well, let's hear for Achilles for his warrior spirit. Ready to continue. And that's it. Okay, I've just been approached over here at the, at the booth. I've been approached by lead official Kyron Bowen, and it seems that, that that winning strike was actually an illegal strike. So even though right now what you're seeing is Runt being declared the winner, this fight is not over. We are going to take a 15-minute break, let both of these fighters talk to the medical and team, and then we will resume this break. fight or not resume this fight and, uh, in about we'll 15 minutes. Now, we're going to go to the next fight on the card, and that's going to be Raven versus the Crippler. So we're going to let our medical team check out uh, Achilles and see exactly what's going on here. So without any further ado, we're going to move right to the next fight. Gentlemen, Raven is returning tonight. He's one of the new fan favorites. Raven comes to us from Branson, Missouri. He is the first featherweight winner in any slap fighting match in history. He knocked out Scrappy Doo in his first appearance at the barrel. Scrappy Doo took a seat. And Raven moved on to fight one more fight. Raven is a tough, tough country boy. You can see by his boots, he's a lifetime martial artist. He fought Run in his last outing and pulled out another win. He's two wins and zero losses in slap fighting, and he's very, very popular with the American slap fighting fans. The thing about Raven is he's one of the most kind fighters in the sport. He's a very nice kid, but the thing that's menacing about Raven is that his flexibility allows him to twist so far back that he can see his hand in his opposite peripheral vision. His opponent tonight will be the Crippler, the Crippler is from Licking, Missouri. He is a, a retired kickboxer and mixed martial artist who made his debut at our last event versus the Cannon. The Cannon cripple whipped the Crippler and put him under quickly because the Crippler had a difficult time with his penalties. But he has been training and he has perfected his game. And tonight, he is looking for a big knockout over Raven. I'm honored to fight with Raven. I know he hasn't lost the fight, but I'm ready for this competition. I'm Raven. I'm here at Slap Fight Championship to face the Crippler. I'm excited to face somebody my size, uh, finally. And I'm going to bring the show tomorrow. I'm going to bring honor my people. Don't blink.
Raven, another cowboy boot wearing competitor. Raven has a personal friendship with Wolverine, but he is actually the trainer of Darius the Destroyer. Darius the Destroyer and Wolverine have worked with Raven, and Darius has turned him into a slapping machine. Now, this is a little bit of a disadvantage for Raven. It's his first match without Darius the Destroyer in his corner, and that is because Darius Destro the Destroyer is in Vegas filming a reality series with Dana White called Power Slap. You can see it on TBS in January, and without Darius in his corner, Raven is on his own. As always, our lead official for this match will be professional fighter Kyron Bowen. Our line official, Q Davidson. We'll have a quick coin toss here. Raven calls it. All right. And it looks like Raven lost the coin toss. And the crippler will slap first. Okay, it's just been determined that the crippler is going to fight left-handed, so they're going to switch sides. And we're going to do that for the fans at home. That way you're going to be able to see all of the blunt force trauma. If you'd like to bet on this fight, you can. The odds are quite simple. The over-under, if it lasts more than nine and a half rounds, 110, under 110. Oh, my gosh! The crippler just busted Raven in the face. Cotton went flying. Once again, you can bet on this match. The Crippler at plus 130, Raven at minus 165. That means that the favorite is Raven. $165 at DraftKings will win you $100 on Raven. Look at the rotation with Raven. Oh my gosh. Wow. got a club here they're going to have a conversation with these fighters clean this up we have a clubbing warning on the crippler okay raven's going to step over to his corner man he's going to have a quick conversation and for the first time in his career it is not darius the destroyer in his corner is Isaac, one of our Sports Slap USA corner men. He's cornered many, many fights. He's got quite a bit of knowledge about the slap game, but he is not the American undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion that is typically in Raven's corner. Go, Raven! Now watch this rotation on the windup. Watch this hand all the way to the other side of his body. Oh my gosh, here we go. Oh, to the neck, to the neck. Oh, I hate to see that. That big right hand came all the way from the back 40. Smacked the crippler in the neck, and so there will be a warning for clubbing. And if Raven clubs again, he will lose a turn. Two of the most friendly guys on the card tonight. Both of these guys are great people, great humanitarians, really good guys, but uh, they're both trying to knock the other out. And at the face-off last night at the weigh-ins, that was made clear. Oh, my. It was a good slap. I don't know if we had any foot movement there, but it definitely was. Oh. These, these officials are not playing. That's the second stepping violation for the Crippler. He's going to lose the turn, and now Raven's going to have two slaps in a row. Crowd very supportive of Raven. Come on, Raven! One! Come on, boy! Two! Big shot coming. Oh, my gosh. And as you can hear, the crowd just loves Raven. They're so supportive. We have some fantastic athletic supporters in the audience tonight. All right, the crippler, left-handed slapper. Oh no, it looks like we're discussing 
Oh, okay, it's been determined. Okay, this was the loss of the turn for the Crippler. So the officials are giving Raven a second slap here. The Crippler lost his fourth round slap due to penalty. Look at this rotation. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> wow. You know, I don't think I've ever seen anybody with that type of flexibility in slap fighting. It's just unbelievable. Raven is a, he is a lifetime martial artist. He's a fighter. Uh, he's a jiu-jitsu practitioner. And he runs a small gym in Missouri called Storm Gym with his father. It's a fantastic group of young people that they mentor. Really, really great people. Also, the Crippler I've known for a very long time. He was a fighter many years ago in our, in our uh, kickboxing leagues. And I've just watched this guy demonstrate fantastic character and, and wonderful dedication to combat sports for years. But these guys, uh, they're not here to be friendly to each other. This is a, a hunt for a knockout. It's a 10 round scheduled fight. Each guy having a pretty intense conversation with their cornermen. Some of the viewers at home wonder about strategies in slap fighting. There are a lot of strategies. Uh, number one strategy, namely, uh, slap him in the face. All right, the break's now over. The competitors are going to approach the barrel. As you can see, both competitors have cotton in their ear. All competitors wear cotton in their ear at Slap Fight Championship to protect their eardrums from damage. Here we go. Oh, that was fantastic. Immediately you see the handprint on the face of Raven. We're back to the barrel here. This is round five, pardon me, round six. The Crippler checking his placement. One, two, three. Oh no. That was a horrible club. Raven took it. I can't imagine they wouldn't call a clubbing penalty here. That was a clubbing violation on Crippler. Oh no, Crippler has lost another turn. You know, this is the thing about slap fighting, friends. Slap fighting is a very dangerous sport. We don't want to hurt anyone, and so what we do is regulate the best we can, and sometimes that means these fights come down to points. Big rotation again from Raven. Oh, good slap. You know, Raven has an incredible style here, and most of that is due to the fact that he is so flexible as a, a martial artist and kickboxer. But, but what that, just as, I, just as I said, what that does create for Raven is difficulty not pivoting his right foot. In kickboxing, it's a big, it's a big secret to your power when throwing right hooks, left hooks, to, to pivot that front foot, and that's what's happening with Raven. The right foot pivots, it's just, it's just habit, it's, it's not on purpose, but unfortunately, it is not allowed when slapping. So he has lost a turn. And now the licking Missouri one, native has two slaps in a row. Three. Oh, that was a good one. Got a little bit of nose there. Unlike many other competitors tonight, Raven is not complaining about being smacked in the nose. I'm certain that the judges saw this. The Crippler 157 pounds tonight, Raven 149.6. So we've got about uh, six or seven pounds difference here. And the height is identical, 5'11". Round eight. Solid shot. Now we're going to have to wait to see if there was a stepping violation. I'm almost conditioned to wait for those now. Hopefully these slappers are pulling it together here. I don't see any violations. Raven's now in the, in the zone. He's got the hate face on. He's staring bullets through the crippler. I've known both of these slappers for a while. Both of these guys are typically merciful. I don't see that tonight.
I also want to be honest, there's a really good chance that the Crippler is solving some sort of equation and mathematical concept in his mind while slapping. One, two, three, wow. He probably calculated the trajectory there. That worked out really well for him. Stepping warning for the Crippler. Stepping violation, Crippler, loss of turn. Oh no, it's not a warning at all, it's a loss of turn. This is bad for the Crippler. We've had a lot of penalties in the last few fights and uh, these officials are not playing around. The Crippler is now on the ropes. We are near the end of the match. That's not a good time to lose a turn. was a big, big shot from Raven. Stumbled the Crippler just a little bit. Final slap, guys, let's go. Yeah. All right, this is the last slap of the match. Raven has a fantastic opportunity here. Look at his face, he knows it. Final slap of the match, here's your wind up. Two, three. Whoa! And Raven pulls it out, this is anybody's match. We're going to go to the judges' scorecard for the decision after 10 rounds. And at this point, I couldn't even tell you who I thought was the winner of this match. But what a fantastic slap match between these two featherweight lightweights. I can see the officials calculating. And it looks like they've determined who the winner is. Let's go to the barrel. Great fight, fighters. Let's hear it for them. Raven, that's three wins in a row for Raven. That was a razor thin split All decision. All right, I'm here with the winner, Raven. Great job, you guys went 10, 10 rounds. You actually got a couple extra slaps here. How, how did it feel when he told you you got the last two? Felt pretty good, man. I knew that I had to get something done because I had a couple penalties. So I knew that I had to be clean with them. And I did what I could do, hit as hard as I could, you know? Right on, well, good job. And you had, a, what was the little situation with your corner? Did you have an issue with uh, someone who couldn't make it here? Yeah, you know what? Uh, our guy, Darius Destroyer, who's the heavyweight champion, he's off doing his own thing, uh, making his own awesome life. So uh, he's watching us and uh, glad to get a win for the champ, you know? So shout out to Darius. Ha shout out, Darius Destroyer. All right, brother. Well, congratulations. Go celebrate. Thanks, brother. Raven! Our next matchup includes the outlaw. He's a last minute replacement, the outlaw. He's stepping in for the law. The law signed up to, to slap fight. He called up, he asked who his opponent was. I told him it was the cannon and suddenly the line went dead. The law didn't want the smoke. So wherever you are, the law, uh, wherever you are, I want you to know that we really wish you were here tonight, but instead, this is what we get. I'm here to kick ass and take names. Uh... I'm ready to get the show going. I'm the Cannon. I'm looking to continue my win streak. Don't know much about my opponent except that he's a martial artist, but he's not going to be able to handle what I'm going to give to him. It's going to be less than 10 rounds, and I'm going to keep making my way towards the title. Let's bring out the first competitor fighting out of Grove, Oklahoma. He weighed in at 161 pounds. Please welcome the Outlaw! 
Paul. This is a career martial artist. He is a mixed martial artist, a kickboxer, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, and a proud new father. None of that matters. This is his first time at the barrel, and he is fired up and ready to face the cannon tonight where he wants to make a statement at Slap Fight Championship. He's having a quick conversation with line official Q Davidson. Checking both of his hands, checking his fingernails. And here he is stepping up onto the platform now. The outlaw. Jesus, others call him Moist Critical Slapper, and I call him the Cannon. This guy is all the way from Sevierville, Tennessee, where he has built a little group of incredibly hairy, incredibly talented slappers. It's the Cannon, ladies and gentlemen. The Cannon made his debut earlier this year and immediately skyrocketed to fame with slap fans around the world. He's a great guy. He had a tough start to his career, a no contest, a loss due to penalties, but he is back in the win column after his last fight, and he's looking to continue that path tonight. Again, ladies and gentlemen, our lead official, Kyron Boeing, having a, Bowen having a quick rules meeting with our competitors, giving a quick once over of the rules, and then we'll move right to the coin toss. Each of our competitors had a quick training camp before the, the match with legendary people's champion, Frank the Tank. Looks like we've got a little bit of an issue here with the, the uh, tape around the wrists. You'll notice that each of our competitors taped their wrists at Slap Fight Championship, and the reason is not to secure the wrist. The reason is because it helps the officials to see how deep the slap goes, and of course, the heel of the hand can make contact with the face, but it cannot extend past the chin. The tape helps the judges and officials to see exactly how deep it extends. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up the wrist of Outlaw, and he's going to step back to the barrel, and here is our coin toss. Cannon calls the coin toss, and it looks like he has lost that coin toss. The outlaw is going to get to showcase his striking now. The Cannon has a lot of fans. All the way from Tennessee, the outlaw from Oklahoma. And here's your windup. Very tough guy, the outlaw. Looking to make a name for himself tonight, and here he comes. The Outlaw with a fantastic slap, no foot movement, no clubbing. Wow, that's a nice welcome change to the night. The Cannon's gonna take a quick little break here. I've joked in the past, the Cannon will take a slap and then walk about 15 miles in that little four foot square beside the barrel. Team Cannon burst onto the scene earlier this year, and they have amassed a 7-3 and three record so far this season. 7-3 and three is an incredible record in slap fighting. That's 10 matches for a team of three in the past six months. Outlaw standing at the barrel, staring bullets through the cannon. I've known of the Outlaw for a while. He is a master strategist. Plays a lot of mind games. Checking his placement. Here's the windup. Oh my gosh, the cannon rocks Outlaw. Outlaw refusing to go down. Wow. Outlaw eats the slap. He now has 60 seconds to recover. Lead official Kyron Bowen is having a quick conversation with the cannon. 
I don't think they've called a penalty there. I think he's just telling the cannon just to watch his placement. All right, you heard the announcer, Dallin Getling. We have a warning for clubbing on the cannon. I hate to see that. That's a fantastic slap. I did not see the violation, but I do believe that the officials have a, a lot better viewpoint than we have here. The cannon 5-7, the outlaw 5-9, but the outlaw has on his work boots, giving him an extra inch or two. That's part of his strategy. It may look ridiculous, but it is effective. The outlaw seems like maybe he'll be robbing a bank or a stagecoach. Checking his placement. Oh, another great slap. The outlaw using the straight arm. This is an old school technique. Back in the beginning of slap fighting in the United States, almost every slapper used that straight arm technique. Uh, the outlaw using it tonight. We haven't seen it be very, very effective. A lot of slappers have moved on from the straight arm technique. They're using a, a, a you know, a, an overhead technique, a pimp slap. There's some, uh, you know, some techniques like Wolverine would use where he engages his core and slaps upward. White Simba had a technique earlier where he came from up above. There's a lot of new techniques in slap fight. Later tonight, Biscuit will compete. Biscuit has his, his own style as well. But Outlaw is opting to use an old school style and so far it may win him the match. Very even. The cannon steps back to the barrel. It's time to go to work. Checking his placement. Here's the wind up. Oh my goodness. The cannon with some more big power. You can see the lights went out for just a second, and then Outlaw pulled it together. Outlaw turns his back to the barrel, takes just a few seconds to breathe and clear the cobwebs. Looks like the cannon's gonna take another little walk. In the corner of the cannon tonight, Puerto Rican kickboxer Melvin Bolido. In the corner of Outlaw, mixed martial artist Isaac Spencer. Again, this match is scheduled for 10 rounds. At this point, I, I don't see it going 10 rounds, but we are in round three and anything can happen. Outlaw taking every second of the break, but it's almost over. He's gonna step back to the barrel I say I'm very impressed with the outlaw. Very, very impressive. He's, uh, he's never slapped before. He's getting a lot of mileage out of this old school technique. Unfortunately, uh, I do think there's a little bit more power with a cannon and maybe as this uh, match continues, that may change. The cannon with a pretty ponytail. You know, I really like the style here. I, I really like the clean style of Outlaw. I don't know that, oh, I don't know that he kept it up there. As soon as I said that, they called him for stepping. Again, the feet at Slap Fight Championship when delivering a slap have to be shoulder apart, and you cannot move your feet, pivot, or step when striking. The problem that we're seeing with Outlaw is that he is a trained striker, a kickboxer, and an MMA fighter, and so it is second nature to him to rotate his right foot when throwing a slap. He's been working on that. We know that he's trying, but sometimes in the heat of battle, it's just difficult to hold that together. The Cannon has dealt with those growing pains. The Cannon doesn't have a lot of penalties. So that may make a difference in the match. We will see as we progress. We are in the bottom of round three. And another big shot from the cannon. Buckles Outlaw just a bit, but he doesn't go down. He's shaking it loose. He's gonna go back, get a drink of the magic water. 
and I have no doubt that he'll step back to the barrel. This fight is sponsored by Zeus Energy Drink, ZeusEnergyDrink.com. If you haven't heard of Zeus Energy Drink, find them on social media on all platforms. Our great sponsors, Zeus Energy Drink. All right, it's time to return to the barrel here. We're almost halfway through the match. Not a lot of swelling on the face of the cannon, but it's tough to tell with the beard. Not a lot of swelling on the face of the outlaw either, but we have seen the cannon turn out his lights quickly in these first couple of rounds. All right, the outlaw checking his placement. He's gonna swing with that straight arm technique again. Here we go. One, two, three. Fantastic, good follow through from Outlaw. <coughs> Unfortunately, he's having a difficult time with his technique here. We have a coming warning on Outlaw. Right, clubbing and stepping. So just as I talked about how clean he was, he got a little comfortable and he's got a couple of violations here. This is too bad. I like Outlaw, I hope he pulls it together. Cannon's in the zone, he may run away with this fight. Outlaw from Grove, Oklahoma, right in the northeast corner of Oklahoma. The Cannon from Sevierville, Tennessee. Another phenomenal slap from Cannon. You can really see the experience of Cannon in this fight, but you have to also recognize the resilience of Outlaw. This is not the first fight for Outlaw. It is the first slap fight, but Outlaw has been in many, many combat sports competitions throughout his career, and I hardly would expect that he would quit this fight due to a little bit of cheek inflammation. The fans in the pit are from slapfight.live. If you go to slapfight.live, you can cast your votes on which fighter is your favorite? And does lead official Kyron Bowen need a haircut? <laughs> Go now to slapfight.live and let us know about that haircut, friends. Mullet or no mullet? All right, here we go. We are back in the mix. It's round five. Outlaw shaking off his haters. Here we go. Going to check his placement. And here we go. Wow, a little bit of swelling there. The cannon, you can see a little bit of swelling on the left side of his face. And you can see on the face of Outlaw, he's starting to, oh no, the Outlaw. Another problem for the Outlaw, he's going to lose a turn here. This is really turning up the heat on Outlaw. He's almost going to need a knockout to win this fight, and we are only halfway through the fight. We've never seen the cannon swell like this. He's having a little bit of a problem with his left eye. The cannon uses every second of his break. I hear a lot of fans complaining about taking full breaks. I want to make it clear that taking a break is not a violation at Slap Fight Championship. Sometimes taking the full break is a strategy. It does not affect the judges' scoring if you take a break or don't take a break. It's just a way to control the pacing of the fight. I'm glad we cleared that up. Good talk. Here we go. Oh my! The 
Cannon is putting in big, big work tonight, but you can see the frustration on his face when Outlaw refuses to go down. I mean, absolutely, the Outlaw refuses to go down. A lot of guys do that. Very quiet in the event center. A lot of fans now for the, the cannon. Very supportive, but very quiet. Round six. Oh, oh my gosh. That's why they call him Slap Jesus. Everybody loves the cannon. The first time we put one of the cannon's fights on our YouTube channel. One of our good friends and YouTube influencers, Moist Critical, Charlie White, he has about 12 million fans who all immediately latched onto the cannon because of his resemblance. Big shout out to Charlie, Moist Critical, good friend of the show. We love you, buddy. Looking forward to talking to you soon. I want to give a, comp a compliment to the cannon with his choice of color for his scrunchie this evening. He's coordinated the scrunchie with the backdrops at the back of the venue, and that's nice of him to do so. All right, the clock is ticking, and it looks like the outlaw is going to come back to the barrel. The nice long fight. It's round seven. Seems like round 27. Outlaw's going to stick with that straight arm technique. One, two, three. Oh, that was a little bit high. Oh, no, it looks like they may call another penalty on Outlaw. Oh, my gosh. As you heard, Outlaw's gonna lose another turn. Fight fans, I gotta tell you, these officials are not playing tonight. They are calling every penalty. Tonight, if you wanna win your fight, you are gonna have to keep it clean. Without a knockout, I don't think there's any way the Outlaw can win this fight. The Cannon recently knocked out Shimokan Thunderclap. Shimokan Thunderclap was a top five, or excuse me, a top 10 ranked pound for pound fighter. The Cannon was not. He took the fight, wanted to make a name for himself, and he absolutely starched Shimokan Thunderclap, one of the best middleweights in the biz. That put the Cannon on the map. He is now in the top 10 pound for pound, but just barely. His teammate Monkey Wrench also in the top 10 pound for pound. A win over the Cannon would be big for Outlaw but so far it's not happening. Cannon wiping the sweat from his hand. He doesn't want any extra lubrication to make contact. One, two, three. Okay, the outlaw with a fantastic chin tonight. A lot of big shots here, a lot of penalties, but also a lot of really powerful slapping from these two lightweight slap fighters. You can see the outlaw is conditioned to take a one minute break between rounds. He goes to his corner man instinctively, quick conversation with his corner man, and then returns to the barrel. I've noticed when mixed martial artists do come to slap fight, they do have a tendency to utilize their breaks in a way that the other athletes do not. One, two, three. Whoa. All right, these shots are starting to add up. You can see it. That's round eight. The cannon putting some more work in. You can hear conversations in the audience asking if they 
They don't know how the outlaw's staying on his feet. I'll tell you how he's staying on his feet. This is a tough, tough guy here. Very excited to have the outlaw tonight. Stepping in on very short notice for the law, which is ironic. Once again, if you're listening tonight, the law, I hope you realize <laughs> I hope you realize that you may never be able to go by the moniker the law ever again. All right, the clock is ticking. Outlaw coming back to the barrel. All right, it's go time. The cannon taking a, another shot from the outlaw. Another straight arm slap coming through at round nine. One, two, three. All right, it looked like a clean slap, but from the sound of it, it may have been another club, and if that's the case, I'm sure they're gonna call it. Okay, it looks like the cannon may have just refused that penalty. Personally, I don't know that I would ever do that. I've seen the cannon do that a few times. I believe the cannon knows that he's got enough penalties in his pocket here to win a decision. It seems like he just wants to keep moving forward. Here we go again. It's nice, nice little fight here. We just got to pull it together, guys. One, two, three. Oh, I got to say the chin of Outlaw is impressive. We all know that Cannon has extreme power for a, a lightweight, but Outlaw is absolutely eating these shots. Unfortunately for Outlaw, the, the penalties are going to make a problem for him tonight, but he has impressed most of the people in this room with his incredible chin and crazy hair. It's very difficult to upstage the cannon with hair. All right, here we go. Outlaw has one last slap here. Let's see what he can accomplish with it. One a mistake that the outlaw is making is putting his hand behind his back. That does work against him. The straight arm technique isn't working as well. Maybe he'll switch that up before his next fight. Two, three, yeah. Not a bad slap, but the hand behind the back does mess with your rotation. I believe he knows it now. That's probably not a win for him, but he did make it to the end of his first slap match with a fantastic opponent. The question here is will the cannon win by decision or will the cannon win by knockout? I say decision. Well, there you have it. I am extremely impressed with the chin of Outlaw, but that is a clear win for the Cannon, and congratulations, Cannon. Your win streak continues. We will absolutely invite the Outlaw back to Slap Fight Championship, and I'm sure his game will, it will improve over time because he definitely has what it takes to have success in the game. So we're gonna go down to the barrel to our announcer, Dallin Getling. We had another fight go the distance. Good job, guys. Slap Jesus for the win. The Cannon from Tennessee bringing home another victory. That's three in a row. That was a that was a tough one though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he was he was really tough. You guys were both so good. I was like, man, I'm not, but I think what did it for you is you're so good, you're technical. You don't have any, I think you had one warning, right? No other, no other violent rear. 
That's your first morning ever. First morning ever. I'm telling you, that's, that's your secret. Secret of success, man. Good job. Uh, congratulations. I know you got some teammates you're going to celebrate with. Anybody you want to give a shout out to? Uh, I want to shout out to my brother Chris and his wife Kayla and the Ford family. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. Right on, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Take care. And a cannon! All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my favorite fight on the card, the Slim Reaper versus Biscuit. Take a look at Slim Reaper here. This is an incredible new talent that we have located just in the last few months. Slim Reaper came on the scene with a huge knockout of Shemokin Thunderclap. Shemokin Thunderclap was on his way to a middleweight title fight, and he was derailed by Slim Reaper. Now, Slim Reaper is excited. He absolutely loves the sport of slapping, and he called me and specifically asked for Biscuit. Biscuit's fantastic. He's very famous with the fans. He's a slap-happy hippie from Fulton, Missouri, and he is ready to take on the Team Rocky newcomer right here at the barrel tonight. Now, you can take a look at Biscuit and see he's got an inventive style. He's come up with his own style. He's going to use it tonight. We've seen him have some success with it, but he did lose a number one contender fight at the last show against Monkey Wrench after staggering him a few times with that new technique. So tonight he hopes to knock out the Slim Reaper, and he told me that he expects that to be in the fourth round. Slim Reaper, on the other hand, laughs, says that he's going to knock out Biscuit tonight. So we're about to have a firefight tonight, folks, at Slap Fight Championship. It's the Slim Reaper versus Biscuit, a middleweight throwdown in our featured fight at New Era. Slim Reaper tipped the scales last night at 199 pounds. Biscuit tipped the scales at 197.3. This is the first middleweight match for both fighters who have been competing at light heavyweight. Uh, when I found out that Slim Reaper had me on the top of his list, um, I'm from the show me state. He's got to show me something. So, uh, yeah, it, you know, I'm here to slap people and I'm here to have fun. So bring it on. Yo, this is the Slim Reaper. I'm back for round two at Slap Fight Championship. I don't know what Biscuit's got planned, but I know he's going to be taking a nap before the night's over with. He weighed in at 199 pounds. He is the Slim Reaper! Missouri from Team Tank. He weighed in at 197 pounds. He is Biscuit! Biscuit, the slap happy hippie from Team Tank. In his corner tonight, legendary people's champion. Biscuit lives in Fulton, Missouri and trains with Frank the Tank full time. So what you're gonna see tonight is a clash of two accomplished slappers at the barrel looking to recover a title shot and earn their way to glory. Biscuit, as usual, goes to the wrong side of the platform.
All right, a quick rules meeting from pro fighter and lead official at Slap Fight Championship, Kyron Bowen. He's going to go over the rules again. He, they went over the rules in the back. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about it for a moment here. And then the coin toss. We've seen a lot of violations tonight with some of the younger fighters. I would doubt, I would doubt very seriously that we'll see that many violations in this fight, but who's to know? It's the job of the officials to determine what the violations are, not the guy behind the microphone. Slim Reaper's a great guy. Spent a lot of time talking to him. He's a funny guy, but he means business. And I think he just lost the coin toss, so he's going to take the first slap. So far, Team Rocky's had a fantastic 2022. This will be the last event of 2022. Let's see if they can end it with a couple of big wins. Round one. Oh, that's not going to work. Anytime the slap lands with a big thud, you know it's a club, and I would imagine that's going to be a warning. We have a club warning for Biscuit. As always, the Slim Reaper laughing in his competition space, but showing just a little bit of decorum with a fist bump there. Not going to need the break. Steps right back to the barrel. Checking his placement. Here's your wind-up. Oh, holy smokes! Slim Reaper's got a lot of power. I'm not so sure if there's a stepping warning or not. We do have a stepping warning. Yeah, well, there you go. On Slim Reaper. Slim pivoted his foot, so they're going to call the warning. It's very difficult not to pivot your foot, your foot when slapping. You've got, to, you've got to negate your power just a little bit to stay within the techniques necessary. Here we go. Bottom of round one. I'm sorry, that was the top of round two. Pretty good slap there. Didn't do much damage. Slim just shares a fist bump with his coach. He's going to step right back. This is the bottom of round two. Again, we've got one, one warning for Biscuit, one warning for Slim Reaper. Holy smokes, we've never seen Biscuit go down before. If that was a legal strike, I have to say that's a first. That was a club warning for Slim Reaper. Oh no, we got a Reaper. club. Slim Reaper with a lot of power. I also have to say, Slim Reaper with his hand behind his back while swinging is not a good technique, yet still he drops Biscuit with a club. If Biscuit cannot continue, this will be a no contest. And I have to say, Biscuit does not look well. We're going to give him a full minute here and see what he says. Slim Reaper's taking a knee here out of respect. So is Rocky. Absolutely an unintentional club, but a club nonetheless. Medical team taking a look at Biscuit. All right, we're calling this fight a no contest, we're call folks. This one a doctor stoppage. Unfortunately, the doctor has stopped the fight due to an illegal strike. Slim Reaper. No, sir, the Slim Reaper is not the winner due to illegal strike. This is a no contest, friends. A no contest. Unfortunately, we'll have to book this fight another day. Ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, this is actually because there was a, a violation on that, a warning. It was a, a stepping that we cannot he, have. Come over here, Slim Reaper. Let me explain it to you. So obviously, great shot. But if you knock somebody out and they can't continue and it was a, a violation, then it's a no contest. So again, I think you guys might have to run this one back. Uh, I think that's probably what you want. That's probably what he wants as well. Does that sound yeah. right? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, man, well, I know that you were anxious, ready to go. This might not have been satisfying for you because I think you wanted to go like 10 rounds or something. Is that right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, well, usually I think I'd ask you who you're going to call out next, but maybe you just want a, a repeat of this? Yeah, if possible, yeah. 
clean match, be fair. Right on, man. Let's hear it for him, the Slim Reaper. Uh, don't be confused by the medal around Slim Reaper's neck. He did not win the fight, unfortunately, but we will book that again. Absolutely unintentional foul, but uh, unfortunately, he's going to lose his bling, and he'll have to earn that another time. co-main event and I have to tell you this is an exciting surprise on this card Rocky Moore Rocky Moore the original bad boy of slap fight championship back in the old days of slap fight when we were in bars and nightclubs and warehouses during the pandemic Rocky Moore cemented himself as one of the top names at slap fight championship but he wasn't necessarily the most popular fighter blowing kisses and talking trash he then left slap fight championship for about a year and a half he came back as a powerhouse slapper. Gone are the days of Rocky Moore blowing kisses and shoving his opponents across the barrel. In his last performance, he won a fantastic firefight against the Bayou Bastard. The Bayou Bastard, one of the top pound for pound slappers in the sport, a record of seven and three, and Rocky Moore took out the Bayou Bastard to earn this opportunity tonight at the light heavyweight championship. But unfortunately, his original opponent, White Simba, has retired. White Simba pulled from the card, giving us no choice but to call in a replacement, and we have called in Demon. Demon is one of the most popular new fighters from 2022. He dropped the Hulk with an illegal strike back at Slap Fight Undisputed this summer and lost a fight due to a no contest. Excuse me, he lost that fight due to a violation. Unfortunately, there was no fight for him at the following two events, and tonight we call him from the roster to fill in for White Simba against powerhouse slapper Rocky Moore. Unfortunately, since he is not the top contender, like to if Rocky he wins the fight, he will only be the interim champion. Uh, well, thanks, Ed. It's time to see where the metal meets the hardware. So let's get her done, and I appreciate it, and that belt's coming home with me. Time to take it back to Kansas. When I'm Rocky, I'm back for this fucking title. I don't know who Demon is, but I'm here to take this fucking belt home. That shit, I don't know who he is, I don't know what he's been up to. I've been faced between two people to come up for this belt. They didn't want to fight. This dude right here is fixing to lose all that shit. hitting light heavyweights in slap fighting and demon was not afraid to take on this challenge at the last moment i called demon i told him we had an opening in the co-main event for the light heavyweight championship and he said to me i'll be there it's my time and take a look at the face of demon demon is ready to put in some work he's been working on his penalties let's hope that he can control his foot movement he would have been the number one contender at heavyweight with that knockout of the Hulk, but he pivoted when he stepped and it sacrificed him that opportunity. As luck would have it, he is now going to be fighting for the vacant light heavyweight championship. All right, we're gonna bring out his competitor fighting out of Harrison, Arkansas. He weighed at 240 pounds. Please welcome Rocky Moore. And here we have Rocky Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Rocky Moore, one of the most famous faces in American slap fighting, the bad boy of slap fight championship. And this was his opportunity to fight Wolverine, his arch nemesis. Unfortunately, we have sent Wolverine all the way to Power Slap where he's filming a reality TV show called Power Slap. You'll see it on TBS this January. And so unfortunately, Rocky was given White Simba as his opponent for the vacant title. 
White Simba has retired due to uh, a physical condition. And so Rocky will be facing Demon. Unfortunately, Rocky Moore did miss weight by 15 pounds. So Rocky Moore will sacrifice the first slap. Demon will have the first slap. And if Rocky wins the fight, he will not be the light heavyweight champion due to having missed weight. Very unfortunate for Rocky Moore, who, uh, from what I understand, worked very hard to make light heavyweight, but missing by 15 pounds is unfortunate. And he's just going to have to maintain his position as the top contender with a win tonight. Demon, on the other hand, has won the lottery and has an opportunity to take home the belt in his second appearance at the barrel. Rocky miss weight, so what's being explained now is that Demon will have the first slap. You do not want to miss weight at Slap Fight Championship. This is a scheduled 10 round fight and the belt is on the line. Here's Demon with round one. Little bit of confusion there with the audience. Demon's gonna go ahead and check his placement here. Oh, a big, big shot, and Rocky eats it. Rocky stares Demon down, looks over the barrel at him. I do notice Rocky's a little unsteady on his feet. A warning for stepping on Demon. I hope we don't have a replay of his first appearance. Rocky showing a solid chin there. Rocky Moore wearing the cowboy boots tonight, taking a, taking a page from the book of Wolverine. That's the fourth competitor tonight. And Rocky with a big slap, no step from Rocky Moore. Demon shakes it off. Quick conversation with the line official, and yes, it is deemed a legal strike. So we're gonna roll into the top of round two. Demon versus Rocky. Oh, a giant shot from Demon, and Rocky eats it again. Having a conversation, it, it looked like a good shot to we me. We have a club warning on Demon. Oh, they're going to call a club. Sometimes these clubs are called based on the sound of the slap. When a club lands, it's more of a thub, thud, excuse me. And when a slap lands, it's more of a slap. Here's Rocky, round two. Okay, Rocky staggers him just a bit. Demon gives him a fist, fist bump and a little bit of uh, respect here, but he's going to step right back to the barrel and land a slap of his own. Rocky Moore versus Demon. I never thought I'd see this fight. I'm very excited about it. I do see Demon shaking his right hand out like there's a little bit of an issue here. One, Here's the windup. Oh my gosh, a big shot from Demon and Rocky eats it. We may have a violation here and if so, Rocky's gonna receive two slaps in a row. Rocky's we have asking. A stepping violation by Demon. Oh no, Rocky's asking them to review it, and it looks like Rocky's going to have two shots. That is a loss of turn. In a row, you do not want to be slapped twice by Rocky Moore. And Demon knows this. He's taking a deep breath. You can see the frustration on his face. Demon is still in the fight, but he's going to have to eat two slaps now from the veteran. Rocky's going to play a little game here. He's going to eat up his entire shot clock. All right, Rocky's back at the barrel. Here we go. Good shot from Rocky. I didn't see any foot movement. You know, it's ironic that Rocky's wearing his cowboy boots tonight. We've seen quite a few slappers doing that. That's one of the things that Wolverine has done to the sport. He's made a big impression on the sport. And one of the impressions is that people think that they're going to slap better with cowboy boots on. So uh, why they tuck their pants into the boots, I have no idea. But there you go, Wolverine. One, That's a shout out two, to you. Three, three. Another shot from Rocky. No foot movement at all. Clean shots from Rocky. If this goes the distance, he may be uh, the winner of the match. I've seen Demon compete inside the cage as a mixed martial artist several times. 
I have not seen him knocked out. I do know that he has an incredible chin. We've seen Rocky knocked out a couple of times in the past, but always by world champions. Demon checks his placement, takes a deep, deep breath. Oh my goodness, now that was a good slap. Rocky eats it, but Rocky also felt every inch of that slap. Rocky steps back to the barrel with no break, checks his bearings. Okay, now that was a good slap by Rocky. I think there may have been a little bit of a flinch that caused a club. Officials are taking a, a good look at it here. It's being explained we to him. We have a club warning on Rocky. Yeah, it's being explained to Rocky that there's a club. Personally, I saw a little bit of a flinch there, uh, but I don't call the penalties here. It's the job of the officials. We're in round six. Rocky Moore taking his defensive stance. One, Demon winding up. Two, three, oh, that was a fantastic slap. Wow. Staggered Rocky just a little bit, but Rocky swallowed it. Oh, no, another stepping violation. Demon will lose his turn, and Rocky now has the lead on the jump scorecards due to penalties. Demon's going to need the knockout here to win if Rocky doesn't commit some penalties quickly. Demon is capable of that knockout. Rocky, however, has not had a knockout yet. Oh, that was a good shot. Demon steps right back to the barrel to push the pace. Rocky's going to take a second here. We are in round seven. Demon is in the zone. He wants this title. He wants the opportunities that come along with being the champion at Slap Fight Championship. Rocky's been waiting a long, long time for an opportunity to be at the top of the pack. Rocky with a little bit of a bitch slap there, but it lands. Rocky Moore is an intimidating character. So is Demon. Neither one of these guys is budging. They're staring each other down. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is an incredible battle of wills. Let's see who comes out on top. Demon concentrating on the feet. Here's the wind up. Oh my gosh, and I see him move his right foot. Definitely he's going to lose a turn here, and Rocky Moore is going to have two slaps in a row. Rocky is going to run away with this fight if Demon can't get the knockout, and unfortunately that will mean that we will not crown a new champion this evening. Rocky Moore will, however, remain the number one contender if he wins this fight. Rocky Moore's quite a skilled slap fighter. He's got a lot of light heavyweight fighters coming up behind him. His student Slim Reaper is making his way up the rankings. We've also recently signed Okuma 915. We've got Biscuit, we've got Monkey Wrench, and of course, the Bayou Bastard. Our light heavyweight division is stacked, but right now Rocky Moore is at the top of the heap, and Demon is looking to climb over the top of him to snatch the gold. All right, the break's over. Rocky's going to step back and looks like he'll be throwing his eighth round slap and his ninth round slap. Good job, Rock. A little bit high, but no foot movement once again. Earlier this year, Rocky lost a match to the Bayou Bastard due to pivoting and stepping. It was a horrible, horrible loss in a fight that he was so winning. We have a clubbing violation on Rocky. Oh, and just as I Lost said that, round. they've called Rocky for clubbing, and he's going to lose a round. What that means is there will be no round nine slap. We're going to go directly to round ten. Each one of these fighters will have one final slap. Demon's going to need to make. De Demon is going to need to make the most of it. That's easy for me to say. Rocky Moore is looking like he's in a good position. I wonder if that extra 15 pounds could be helping him. All 
All right, what we need from Demon here is a knockout or he'll be going home as a non-winner tonight. Most people thought Demon was gonna run away with this fight and he has not. And Demon pivots his foot, loses another turn. Rocky will now get a round 11 slap and a round 10 slap. Absolutely. Demon's now in trouble. Rocky Moore's gonna have two slaps. If they're both clean slaps, there's no doubt he's gonna win the decision. We have a stepping violation on Demon. If I were Rocky, I'd land two very slow little small slaps because I think he's got enough of a body of work here in this fight to be the winner. Wouldn't that be hilarious if Rocky broke his hand and lost the match due to some uh, crazy antics? Good job, Rocky. I think Rocky realizes he doesn't need to put a lot of power in these last two slaps. Rocky knows this game inside and out, and I think he realizes that he's done enough to be the winner. Hey, there's another slap. Rocky Moore will have a round 11 slap due to that stepping violation by Demon. There should be one additional slap from Rocky due to the violation on Demon in the last round. And there you can hear our host, Alan Getling, announcing it to the crowd. I believe Rocky knows that he's won this fight. He just needs to be very careful with this slap and not give up an extra turn to Demon. And it looks like that's gonna be the end of the match. We've gone 11 rounds here, Demon versus Rocky Moore. I was very excited to see this fight, but unfortunately, the penalties were too much of a factor. All right, guys, great fight. We do have a winner. There's a lot of penalties there that did decide the fight. You have a winner, Rocky Moore. <laughs> that means Rocky Moore remains the number one contender, and his next fight will be for the light heavyweight championship providing that he makes weight, which I am certain that he will. Rocky Moore, ladies and gentlemen, the original bad boy of slap fighting with the win tonight over Demon, bringing his so win streak to two. So I am here with, with Rocky, and I know we announced this as an interim belt, but uh, unfortunately Rocky missed weight, so he won't be going home with the belt. But the good news is nobody's going to go home with this belt. You made sure of that. You are the number one contender. You ne your next fight will be for the belt. So all you got to do, brother is make weight, okay? But hey, let's talk for a second. That was a, a great round, and of course, your discipline, I think, won you that fight because you didn't have very many violations, and he did. Is that something that you've kind of grown from, being a, from your experience here? Absolutely, coming back from when we started to now and all the penalties, so learning how to do everything, it's helped me a lot. You are one of the veterans, brother. All right, any, anybody you want to give a shout out to? My mom. All right, say hi, mom. Hi, mom. All right, Rocky Moore. Thank you, brother. ready for our main event and I gotta tell you this has been a crazy card with lots of violations and so I am so excited 
to introduce that monkey wrench, the man at Slap Fight Championship with the least amount of penalties and violations is about to fight for the middleweight title and he is facing the Bayou Bastard. That's Ricky, our super fan, who has transitioned from super fan to professional slapper. Ricky, with a seven and three record, is going up against Monkey Wrench, the undefeated 4-0 phenom from Team Cannon. Ricky has made a major statement this year in his competition, but he has not faced the likes of Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench is likely to have very few violations, if any. In fact, Monkey Wrench has never received a penalty. If he can go 10 rounds without Ricky dropping him and Ricky receives at uh, even one penalty, we could see a new middleweight champion in Monkey Wrench. Rick, I watched you slap and get slapped, and you're definitely a hard hitter, and you've got more of a chin than most of them that I've seen, but I've also seen you make mistakes, and uh, Ricky, I'm taking that middleweight belt. You're not gonna get it. It's going home with me, brother. Sorry. Monkey wrench. Brother, I know we're friends. I respect you heavily. But I'm coming at you with full force. I'm not holding anything back. You better be ready. For throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. Let's meet our fighters. First, fighting out of Sevierville, Tennessee. He fights out of Team Cannon, weighed in at 206 pounds. Please welcome Monkey Ranch. A new fan favorite all the way from the beautiful state of Tennessee, Monkey Ranch, the least high maintenance fighter I've ever worked with. In fact, I have booked Monkey Wrench four times at Slap Fight Championship, and I don't think we've shared more than three or four sentences. This guy is a very, very quiet, methodical guy, and he loves to fight. Monkey Wrench, the cleanest slapper in the middleweight division, facing the Bayou and Bastard. And now his opponent, fighting out of Terrytown, Louisiana. He weighed in at 203 pounds. Please give it up for Ricky! This guy has really turned his career around since we met him as an entry in the Adrenaline Middleweight Tournament back in 2020. Ricky has gone on to win seven professional slap matches. None of us could believe it and none of the fans could believe it, but Ricky has become America's sweetheart. He has gone from 255 pounds to 185 pounds in just two years. He is now training jujitsu, kickboxing, and mixed martial arts. But most importantly, he has recently joined with Frank the Tank, and he is now a member of Team Tank. He's a member of Team Tank because he's trying to control the penalties. He knows that this is a difficult matchup. Ricky will have a tough time controlling the penalties if he cannot it is likely that he will lose the fight. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slab fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, while you were away, it looks like the coin toss was won by Monkey Wrench, and he's going to slap first. All right, we're going to switch sides here. Monkey Wrench is a southpaw. So for the sake of the in-studio audience here, we're going to go ahead and switch, switch positions. You can see we've got some fans in the pit here behind the, excuse me, behind the platform. And these fans are from Slapfight.live. Now, these are fans from Slapfight.live, and if you'd like to go to Slapfight.live and register, you too may have an invitation to stand in the pit during a Slap Fight Championship. This is round one. Monkey Wrench is catching his placement. Here's the windup. 
Monkey Wrench socks him in the face. It looked a little high. And on a card that has been rife with penalties, it looks like the cleanest fighter in the league has just received his second warning of his career. If he commits another clubbing violation, he will lose a turn. Look at Ricky. Ricky's checking his placement. Got some new ink on his paw. And Ricky with a good, good shot. He's going to take off his glasses and return right back to the barrel. Ricky has permission from the regulatory body to wear his glasses while slapping as long as he takes them off when receiving. It looks like they have, they have issued a stepping warning, warning for Ricky. And if he steps again, he will lose a turn. Round two. All right, Ricky eats it. Another clean slap from Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench reminds me of a young Wolverine. Very few penalties, very good technique, and a lot of hair follicles. One, two, three. Ricky lands a good slap, but I think there may have been a stepping violation. We're going to see here. We have a stepping violation on Ricky. Oh no, this Ricky realizes what has happened here. There is a stepping violation. He has lost a turn. Ricky needs Monkey Wrench to either go down as a knockout or to commit his first penalty, his first big violation during this fight. Ricky is in trouble. This is the top of round three. Monkey Wrench checking his placement. Impeccable technique with Monkey Wrench. Oh, Monkey Wrench with a big, big shot on Ricky. Ricky felt that, but he's already back to the barrel. Frank the Tank is urging him to step back and push the pace here. Okay, Ricky just realizing it's not his turn. He has lost his round two, or excuse me, his round three slap. Monkey Wrench winding up. Oh my gosh, Monkey Wrench really finding his power here. Monkey Wrench wants that light heavyweight title. And right now it looks like he's making a good stride toward that. Round four, Ricky's back in the, back in the game. Here's your wind up. Good slap from Ricky. Not a lot of power, but at least it was a clean slap. We're halfway through the match nearly. We've got one warning for Monkey Wrench and we've lost one turn from Ricky. That means so far Ricky has learned, he has landed three slaps, Monkey Wrench has landed four. Monkey Wrench lining up. Big wind up. Oh my gosh, Monkey Wrench. Smacks Ricky in the face, and the Bayou Bastard beginning to swell just a little bit. A lot of people underestimated Monkey Wrench when he came on the scene and won the Young Guns Tournament this summer. But with his recent win over Biscuit, there's no doubt Monkey Wrench is legit. He eats another big slap from Ricky. We've really seen some big changes in Ricky over the last couple of years. He started out as maybe one of the poorest slappers in the game, and now he's become a top 10 pound for pound ranked slapper. Number seven in the world, pound for pound, with a record of seven and three, two of which were very questionable. Monkey Wrench, number eight, with an undefeated record of four and oh. Monkey Wrench checks his placement here for round six. One, Big swing. Two, three, Monkey Wrench is putting in some work here. I have to tell you, in an event full of penalties, Monkey Wrench is a welcome change to the card here. We're actually going to see a fast-paced fight here in the main two, event. Three, oh, and Ricky with a good slap. It's a quick moving fight here. We're in round seven. Gonna give a slight edge to Monkey Wrench here due to the fact that he's landed six slaps to Ricky's five. But there's a lot of slapping left. One, two, three. Oh, 
Oh, that was a big, big card. You can see that Ricky's been working a lot on his flinching. He's not giving up nearly as much movement as he did in his previous two uh, uh, appearances at the barrel. Here comes Ricky. Oh, no. Ricky hurts Monkey Wrench with that one. Monkey Wrench doesn't go down, but there's some visible signs of weakness for the first time in Monkey Wrench career. Ricky is already back to the barrel. He definitely hurt Monkey Wrench. Monkey Wrench will probably not be withdrawing from the contest, but we did see just a moment of weakness there. And Ricky's back at the barrel, ready to, ready to scrap. Monkey Wrench having a conversation with his corner man here. It's strange not to see the cannon in Monkey Wrench corner. Tonight, Monkey Wrench is being cornered by Isaac, one of the Sports Slap USA corner men, and I can see cannon in the back of the room watching. Right. Yeah. Monkey Wrench with a wind up, round eight. One, two, three, yeah. Oh my gosh, Monkey Wrench with some crazy, crazy slaps tonight. Some big, big stuff. Ricky dancing around a little bit here, shaking out his cobwebs. Round eight. Oh, Ricky's putting in some work. He's trying to pull this thing out. Ricky already back to the barrel. No break necessary. Monkey Wrench talking about life with his corner man, questioning his decisions. Ricky punching himself in the jaw, waking himself up a little bit. The Bayou Bastard recently had his first MMA smoker fight. Bayou Bastard enjoying combat sports, but wants this title and feels as if he has put together enough work that he, he he's earned this shot. Unfortunately for Ricky, that one penalty early in the match is haunting him, and you can see it on his face as he dances next to the barrel. All right, some more white on black crime here. Round eight. One, two, three. Oh, Monkey Wrench with another slobber knocker, and Ricky steps right back to the barrel with his big ass glasses on. We probably all look like fish to him with those big aquarium glasses, but let's see if they help the accuracy. Here we go. Shot from Ricky. Wow. At this point, it is becoming an even match. The penalty from Monkey Wrench might be negated from the power we're seeing from Ricky. This is anybody's fight. We are in round 10. Monkey Wrench, no penalty so far. Visibly rocked in round seven. Oh, and he lands a big one. Ricky gives him just a little bit of respect here. Monkey Wrench feels good about it. Looks like he broke a couple of blood vessels in his hand. Ricky hulking out. This is it, Ricky. This is your opportunity. Oh, my God, Ricky. Whoa. Monkey Wrench is hurt. Oh, my gosh. That has been a fantastic fight. I have no idea who won this fight. It is anybody's match. Ricky with some big, big power staggering his opponent two or three times. Monkey Wrench with one penalty against Ricky. This is a very, very close fight. We are about to crown a new middleweight American slap fighting champion. And here comes Dallin Getling to the platform. All right, guys. This was quite a fight. Let's hear it for him. Good job, guys. Your winner and new Slot Fight Championship Middleweight Champion, Monkey Wrench! Wow! We have a new middleweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, and Monkey Wrench cannot believe it. Five wins in a row, and Monkey Wrench kissing his mama and accepting his new belt. I'm going to do that too.
Wow, look at the face of Monkey Wrench. This is an emotionless man showing big, big emotion. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, your American middleweight slap fighting champion, right. Monkey Wrench. That was quite the fight. I believe we saved the best for last. Great pace, great back and forth. You guys, it was a very clean fight. In fact, I believe, what, did you have your first warning tonight in a fight? Technically, yeah. Wow, that, that, I'm telling you, that is a strategy that's gonna win you fights. It won you the belt because you guys were back and forth. That was the difference. Power in, man. It just works out that I just have clean slaps. Yeah, no, the power's there, too. The power's there from both of you guys. I, that wasn't a criticism on that. He hits hard, dude. I had to pull through with extra. He hits like a train. Gotcha. My cheek is going to be swollen and cut up like, like a meat bag. Like a meat bag. All right, man. Well, we won't be able to see it because of that beard, but maybe that's why you grow it. But, but man... Great job, great job tonight. Congratulations. How does it feel to be the champion? Because you told me last time, I think you said you were done. And here you are, now you're the champion. What changed your mind? Uh, I, think, I think you might have misheard. I won't go against Biscuit again. Gotcha. So you just didn't want to go against Biscuit again. Yeah, I got too much respect for the guy. All right, man. Well, you are the new champion. Congratulations. Good luck. All right, go celebrate. Monkey Ranch.